Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is more of a how to recipe. We're going to be showing you three different types of potato dishes from the same type of potato. Uh, they're all restaurant quality dishes so it's more than these things you can make at home and it's really simple to do. This is three simple basic potato dishes from the same sort of potato. This is an Albert Rooster red potato. So really simple, we get them in all the supermarkets. What we're going to do first, we're going to make mash, gnocchi and potato fondant. So restaurant quality dishes, first thing you do is you get your gnocchi ready, you put, them on a, you put about a kilo or whatever you've got left on a tray, roughly the same sort of size to go into the oven. Next what you do is you peel about a kilo of potato for mash. I do a kilo because it's nice and easy, it feeds a couple of people. Uh, and you put about two litres of water in here, so just enough water to cover the potatoes, but I weigh my water out, it's very specific this mash recipe, but I weigh the water out. You'll need a little bit of cream for the mash, about a block of butter, so it's per kilo of potato, it's 250 grams of butter, and about 50 grams of salt. So per litre of water, 25 grams of salt. So two litres of water, 50 grams of salt. It does seem a lot for now, but you don't eat the salt, it's only to flavour the potato. Next we've got the potato fondant, so you need two decent sized potatoes, about the same size, a heavy bottom saucepan, quite high up as well, so it can retain the butter and the water, a little bit of butter, obviously I've got a block here, we won't be using all of it, and just some water. Now for the gnocchi, well obviously we're going to be needing potato, but you just need a little bit of flour, it can be gluten free flour, it can be normal flour, preferably plain flour or strong flour is good, Gluten free flour, any specific choice of yours or gluten free flour is fine. This recipe doesn't have to have eggs in it, so it's also vegan. Uh, you can put eggs if you want. I, this recipe specific doesn't use eggs. So the first job you do in this three potato system we've got going on, if you're going to be doing all of these things at once, great, fantastic. If you're just going to be doing bits and pieces, then get it on the fire straight away. This is the gnocchi, so we're going to put this one straight in the oven now and start roasting the potatoes off. Some people put salt at the bottom to help draw the moisture out, or some people tin for the potato. I just like to roast mine as it is, because I don't like to waste too much salt. So we'll put this one straight into the oven. So the gnocchi's in the oven about 180, 190 degrees for about half an hour, 40 minutes. So whilst that's in the oven, next thing you do is you're gonna put the mash on the fire. So like I said before, it's one kilo of potatoes peeled. It's the rooster red potato. And two litres of water. Into the two litres of water we're going to put 50 grams of salt and give that a good mix around. Make sure the salt's all over and not just on one potato. And if you want to do less, obviously just do less depending on your family size. 500 grams of potato is fine. Obviously just reduce the recipe down and you just need a little bit less water. So obviously a litre of water, 25 grams of salt. As you notice my potatoes are whole. I don't cut them up too much because uh, it helps to not absorb too much of the salty water. The salt's there to flavor it, not to make it taste of salt. So we'll put this on the heat. We won't, we'll bring it up to the boil, but you do not boil it, just simmer it until it's just cooked. Don't break the potatoes up. So the mash has been simmering away for about roughly 20 minutes now. You just poke that with your knife gently as well. You don't want the potato to break up too much. Like I said, all the salty will go in, salty water will go into the potato and make it really too salty. This is just to make it taste delicious. So the potatoes now are just cooked. So I've strained my potatoes and they've all kept their shape nicely. Then you can let them steam now so all the moisture gets evaporated in the air. What I do normally is I grab myself a nice clean kitchen towel or tea towel and I just put it on top and that just helps for it to steam nice and slowly and all the steam comes out and then once that's done we're going to pass it through a, a ricer or in a masher with the butter at the same time. So now the mash is completely uh, steamed, it's not cold, you don't want it to be cold otherwise you won't be able to pass it through the masher properly. So then keep the pan you worked in, just drain out any excess liquid inside and we're going to 
we're going to mash it into here. Now I've got myself a ricer, you don't have to use a ricer if you don't have one of these, you can just use a basic masher, but I would mash your potato first into this pan with the butter. So what I've got here is 250 grams of softened unsalted butter. The key is unsalted butter because your potatoes are already been cooked in salty water. So you're going to take a potato and you put it in your ricer, and these ricers are great, I think I find they're brilliant because they make such smooth lump free mash and all you're going to do is you're going to push down on the ricer and all the mash comes out nice and lump free which is great if you're making a dinner party mash nice and quick nice and easy once she's mashed a little bit of it to start with pop a little knob of butter in there and then put some potatoes in if the potatoes are too big for the masher then just put, break them up a little bit and so they fit in and with the butter at the same time mash everything together so it looks like you're making play-doh with butter and any bits which get on top of the top of the masher there just scoop them off put them inside as well and then just keep repeating the process till you've used all the butter so 250 grams of butter per kilo of potato it's a very simple recipe did this one in London every year for four and a half years with Pierre Kaufman and it works an absolute treat So once you've got to this stage and all the potatoes are nice and mashed together and all passed through the ricer or with a masher, just give it a good mix, all the butter's in there as well. You don't you shouldn't need to season it because all the salt was already in the water. Give it a good old mixer like this. So you bring all the butter to make sure all the potato has butter in it. Then we're gonna put it on the fire and we're gonna dry it out. Dry it out basically means it's a little bit wet in here, not generally from the potato or from the butter, it's just a bit of extra moisture or condensation so you just want to dry that out so when you add the cream it just takes the cream completely if it does split when you add the cream add a little bit of milk because the fat content in milk is less than it is in cream so now you've got your mash to this stage just keep cooking it out keeping the heat in and give it a good mix make sure you're drying it out nicely now here in this pan next to me I've got some cream getting nice and hot I don't add cold cream to my mash it makes it really gelatinous and, and sticky and it's not very nice so once your mash is like that, as you can see now, it's like a dry consistency, like that texture inside. You can just tell by it when you break it apart. It's just dry. So you could do with you could do with just adding the cream to it now. That's perfect stage. Just keep mixing it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Bring all that that mixture up from the bottom to the top. Just give it a good old mix, making sure it doesn't stick. Then I warm the cream up already. So. I'm going to pop the cream in a little by little. You can add more if you want, you can add less if you want. It's either to you how creamy and, and rich you want it. Obviously, this mash is you can have it every day if you really want to, but it is quite rich. So, give it a good mix now. Keep mixing up all the cream inside. If you think you need more cream, just warm a bit more cream up and pop it in. So once you go to this stage and it's nice and creamy and buttery, it's perfect. If it does go a bit shiny, which I mean by glossy where all the butter starts to come out, add a bit of milk to it and it'll be perfect. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep the fondant potato. So, nice and easy. Most chefs will cut it with a ring cutter. This way it works a lot better and it's a lot quicker. So what you do, you grab your potato, flip it onto its edge, like that, and with your knife, a big knife, preferably the size of the potato, you're gonna cut off an edge, just straight down. You do the same again on the other side. If you want big potatoes, then cut off a little amount. If you want small potatoes, then cut off a bit more. So obviously, as you can see now, I have a potato with no edges on it. So, nice and simple. I want to take up a little bit more of my potato because I don't want it that thick. So we're going to remove that side there, and then you just make sure it's nice and level. Keep these bits for later, you can use that for something else. And with your peeler, so grab yourself a speed peeler, you're going to run your peeler all the way around the potato. And what this does, it refines the edge. So as you can see now, I have a nice clean edge potato here as well. And all you do now is just run your peeler around the edge and just make that edge a little bit softer so it's not like a, a really fierce pointy edge. You do the same on the other side. 
exactly the same process all the way around. It's nice and easy, nice and simple way of doing a fondant potato. So it's not, it's not very chefy to do this at home because you can make this like this quite easily. You just got to curve it around. You can do everything with a pilo these days. You can even turn your potato with it or your vegetables. So just like that, and then you have a potato fondant. So you repeat the process again with the other one. If you're doing for two people, if you're doing for four people, make four, vice versa. It's the same process again. The claw method, with your hands on top. My wrist is secured to the table, so it's not moving. And all you're gonna do is just cut down nice and straight, keep your knife nice and parallel to the potato. And same again on the other side. And then you just determine on how thick you want your potato. If you want it a bit thicker, leave the cut a little bit less off. If you want it a bit thinner, if it's not so straight, just trim it up a little bit. And then repeat the same process again with the peeler all the way around. So it's nice and even all the way around. Obviously the more you do, the quicker you get. Nice and simple. So obviously the potatoes are the same size. Don't peel too much because you reduce your size of your potato down. So I'll start with a bit of a bigger potato than what you want. And just peel it all the way around, nice and simply. And just refine your edge. And then you have an easy potato fondant. They're both the same size, nice and simple. So now I put my heavy base saucepan on the fire. I'll add a little bit of oil. If you have clarified butter, which is just melted butter separated from the fat, so you can put that in there as well. You want a nice high heat on here. And you put the potato in, make sure they're nice and dry. So if you ever dab it on a bit of a kitchen roll, just to dry the potato starch out of it from when you peeled it, this will just help it form a nice little crust. So pop that in there like that. Try not to move it too much once it's in the pan because it will break that crust off. Just put this other one in. And just leave them in there for a few minutes just to get a little bit of colour on them. I've got a little jug of water here next to me and some butter. So all I've done is just cut the butter up a little bit. So when I drop it in, it melts quite quickly. And I've kept the butter paper. So it's just the paper the butter sits in to sit on top of it as a, as a lid almost. So I'm just gonna wait for that to color up now, nicely now. So once you get to this stage, you can see that the potato starts to make a bit of color. Obviously my potatoes now come clean off the bottom, which means they've kind of started to sear. You can see the bit of color on the bottom of the potato. When you get to this stage, you want to color it for a little bit longer before you add your butter. The butter will go in and help to make it a little bit nuttier. So that just stays in there for a little bit longer. Like my potatoes are now obviously come unstuck because the oil has got underneath the potato and it's helped it become a little bit seared, like on the outside. So with the butter, you're just gonna put some butter in. Just a couple of blocks. So here's about a three quarter, a quarter of a block, maybe half a block. It depends on how many potatoes you're doing, really. They go in there like that. You can use chicken stock for this as well. You don't just have to use water like I'm using. You can use chicken stock. You can even use veg stock if you want. I'm just going to use plain water on mine. I'm just going to put a little bit more butter in here. And then turn the heat on to full. This is the best bit now, get the heat on full power. Because the nuttiness of the butter will help to make the colour on the bottom of the potato stronger. And as you can see the butter is now starting to foam. It's going to take it a little bit longer. Now we try not to move the potatoes now too much. We don't want to move them really at all to be honest because we just want them to cook where they are. Now you can see the butter start to frome and go really frothy. You can see by the edge of the pan it starts to get a bit nutty. That would only help enhance the flavour of the potato. At this stage now, we're going to add some water. So I've just got a basic water, nothing special about it. Like I said before, you can put some stock in it. You put some water in there. Now what you want to do now is cover your potato with the water. And then with the butter paper, obviously I'm using a supermarket brand butter so it doesn't matter too much that just sits on top like a lid and what that will do is help bring it up to the boil and when it's coming to the boil nice and quickly that will help you reduce your your liquid down once the liquid is reduced and your potatoes are soft 
soft and it's ready. If the potatoes aren't soft, add a little bit more water to them and just cook them a little bit longer. So almost now, technically you're boiling them, but you're reducing the liquid at the same time. So this is almost a lid, and this will just boil it, help to boil it nice and quick. As you can see now, it's come to the boil nice and quickly. Quickly just pull off the butter off the top, the butter paper, sorry, off the top, and let that now reduce down. So the butter papers work really well. As you can see now, my potatoes have started to move around a little bit. So try and keep them in, in the centre where the high heat is. We're going to kind of cook them through now. These potatoes work the best for this. They don't break up when you cook them like this. Now you've got to reduce that right down. And when that's cooked, the potatoes should be nice and tender with a knife like here. As you can see now, they're really hard, but they should be nice and tender when they're cooked. Now as you can see at this stage all the butter is starting to evaporate, it's almost completely gone. The colour is starting to change all around. And this will help colour the potato a little bit more on that side. If you haven't got a nice colour at the start, this will get the colour to this stage now. So you cook all this down nice and fiercely, still on the high heat until you keep cooking it and cooking it, but always checking to see if your potatoes are cooked. Mine are almost there. My knife just slipping through it gently, so just a little bit longer, and then we should be ready to go. So as you can see now, all my water is now evaporated, and my butter's gone back to the nutty foaming stage. Just baste quickly on top of your potatoes. You can cook these potatoes in the oven, so if you wanted to, you make the colour quickly, you bring them up to the bowl, and you put them straight in the oven. They can, they can almost bake fondant in the oven. I prefer to do mine on the fire here because you can control it more. Just keep basting a little bit there, just make sure you cover all your potato. Quick little stab to make sure they're cooked. If they're not cooked at this stage, add a splash more water. I need a splash more water in mine, just a little bit. Just to help bring back that butter and that will just help finish off the potato. And we'll just cook that out a little bit more. So as you can see now, it's almost completely evaporated all the butter and the water. My potatoes are nice and soft now, they're nice and cooked. So the trick is now, is to let it rest. So I take it off the fire, and I just let it cool down completely. If your potatoes are loose and they can move now, then you can take them out of the pan. But if they're still a little bit stuck, then just let them sit there for a little bit, and they should just loosen themselves, and you can just pop them out of the pan nice and easily. Don't try and scrape them off the bottom of the pan because you'll lose that nice colour you call uh, start, made at the start. Just let it rest for a little bit, like you're doing with a bit of meat or a bit of fish, and then you can just take it off the bottom of the pan nice and easily. As you can see now, the fondant's been sat for a few minutes, they're nice and rested, and the potato is now loose off the bottom of the, the pan. You take your potato, you flip it out, or you flip it over in your pan, sorry, like that. So now you can see a nice colour and a nice crust on top. The ideal world is to let it drain for a minute on some J cloth if you're using it straight away. If you're using it for a dinner party, it's great. Just pop them there, flip them out, and be very careful of it not to scratch the bottom off the potatoes so you lose all that nice colour you just made. And there you go, there's your two perfect potato fondants, nice and soft in the middle, a little bit crispy on the outside, nice colour. So now the potatoes are nice and soft as you can see here. You can squeeze them and they're soft to touch. So now what we do with this, is we grab ourselves a, another bowl to mix it in. You can cut all your potatoes in half. This is where you gotta work quite quick. Because if you cut them all in half and they start to go cold, your potato, well, it will go really starchy and gluey. So I don't cut my potatoes in the tray. I always cut them on a board. So cut a couple in half like that. Grab yourself the masher again, or the masher by hand, and a nice clean spoon. And then what you do is you open up your masher, pop it in your bowl like this so it stands upright, and in your hand, is, if it's a little bit warm, use a tea towel underneath in your hand, um, and just scoop out the potato, and drop it into your masher. So you're keeping the skin separate, and you're putting all the potato into the masher. Just like this. And you're doing the same process with all the potatoes, and you're repeating the process like you did with the mash before into this masher so everything kind of goes through but it's nice and dry, there's no butter going in this one so this then goes into here and then we just mash this one nice and gently like that so we'll just do all that quickly now 
Okay, so now I'm on the last bit with the potato. Just mash them up nicely. The last piece here, just scrape the bottom of the masher up, or if you're using the handheld one, just make sure it's nice and smooth. And now all the skins are left. You can use these again if you see the little, little, little cups. You can stuff them with some cheese or some tuna and some sweet corn, some cheese, and pop them back in the oven and bake them. They'll go really crispy on the outside and they'll be like a potato pocket. You can ideally deep fry these uh, in a shallow pan with some oil, or you can do a little in, indoor deep fryer and they go really crispy. They're like a tornado to crisps or chips basically. So they work quite well, so you always keep them. Now what we got to do with this mix is we need to weigh it. So every kilo of mix you have, always weigh it once it's mashed as well, so it's, it's, just, it's the better weight. Every kilo of mix, you need 100 grams of flour. Like I said before, you can use gluten-free flour. I'm using plain flour today, but it can't be gluten-free. So I've weighed my mix about a kilo, luckily. Uh, and this was uh, 100 grams of plain flour. Like I said before, it can be gluten-free flour if you wanted. Um, and with, if your mix is slightly different or if it's 850 grams, then just divide by 10. So you need 85 grams of flour to 850 grams of potato. Vice versa, if it's 2 kilos of potato, it's 200 grams of flour, 3 kilos, 300 grams. So just keep going like that until you have the same ratio of flour to potato. And at this stage you can add 2 egg yolks as well if you want. I don't add my egg yolks to this, I just add flour. So basically now this is where it gets a little bit messy, all the flour goes into here and a pinch of salt goes in there as well make it season it up as well at this point because you're going to mix it all really well you don't want to keep mixing it because you'll make it really sticky and, and uh, gluey so you add salt at this point as well and then herbs so if you want to add any herbs to it or any flavour to it you can do so I've made ones with beetroot in it so I've just added a 200 grams of beetroot puree or the same with butternut squash I've just added 200 grams of butternut squash puree same with artichoke, uh, the same with spinach, you can add that to it. Or you can just chop loads of herbs through it. Coriander, parsley, dill, works really well in there as well. Just make sure when you do it, they chop them nice and fine with the rocking motion I showed you before in the other videos. And then um, mix it really well. So as you can see, I've mixed it now with my nice clean hands. Mix it until you can't mix it anymore. But always make sure your potatoes still warm. And still got some heat in it. If it goes stone cold, then it's gonna be really hard for you to mix it. So obviously as you can see, I'm just pushing it and mixing it, and mix it until you just can't mix it anymore, because there's no more room, or you've used all, you mix all the flour in. And you can see it's all firmed up nicely. I'm gonna tip it onto my bench here. And first you're gonna put a little bit of flour on the bench, just a little bit, just to help it from not sticking. And put it on the bench here like that. And there's your knocky dough. So nice and simple, nice and easy. A nice easy dough to work with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up into portions or logs and then we're going to roll it out on, we have two pieces of equipment here, we have a knocky bat where you roll it out along there or we have a little fork, so if you don't have one of these bats at home you can use a fork, um, we're going to do that next. So now I've divided my mix into four, they're not equal size, it doesn't matter too much, so they're just balls of potato and floury dough almost. And you're going to roll this out into a little sausage, so you can freeze these or you can blanch them. I normally blanch mine and then I refresh them in nice water and then you can fry them if you, as long as you toss them in some olive oil or some rapeseed oil when you need them so they don't stick together. You can freeze them at this stage, I suppose. If you cut them and pop them in your freezer with a flour on them, they don't stick to each other. And all you have to do then is fry them to order when you need them. So all we're gonna do is roll a little sausage out like that. If you get any bits stick to it, just pick them out. And move all this out of the way then so you don't cut on your mum's kitchen table or your kitchen table at home get yourself a scraper I haven't got a flat edge one I've only got one of these ones with the with the cuts on the end so what you do is either at a 45 degree angle um, let me just cut that in half here so you can see either at a 45 degree angle or at, um, a flat angle you're just going to cut straight down like that so nice and easy. You can leave them like this if you want. There's no wrong way about knocking. No one has the right or the wrong way. You can leave them like this if you want, or you can roll them onto the fork or the thing which we're gonna do next. So 
So as you can see, I've already rolled some of these out already. They're a little bit longer because I cut them at a diagonal. So if you cut them at different sizes and different shapes, you get a different a different shape out of it at the end. Uh, you can freeze these, so I've obviously I've put them in a little tray with some flour. And I'll do the same process again, but I've cut these at a straight angle now. And all I'm going to do now is push down the locky paddle and roll it over. So you have like a, a marking all the way over. The same thing, it doesn't have to be perfect because they're going to be blanched anyway. You start higher up and do it like a little sausage all over. Start lower down. Nice and easy. If you don't have one of these ones, like that one there, I just did again. You see, if you don't have one of those, you can do it on a fork. So you just push on the fork and just push over and down. Same thing again, push on the fork, push over and down. But we have one of these paddles, so you can use one of those paddles. So like that. And just repeat the process until you've finished all of it. So as you can see, I'm just going to keep rolling them out and then I put them in this tray, I floured them nicely so give them a good mix so they don't stick together so when you freeze them, which I'm going to do now you just keep flouring them like that and then when you want to make another layer, put another bit of paper on it flour that bit of paper like that and repeat the process again if you want them straight away like I said before, just boil them, blanch them you can fry them straight away from scratch, you don't have to blanch them the only issue you have is that you need to cook it on a lower temperature when you're frying them so you don't burn it before it's cooked in the middle and just keep just keep cooking it out and then just keep repeating the process nice and easy, it's nice and simple, it's quite therapeutic once you get going obviously kids can be involved as well if you have kids to, to do it with each other you know, it's a bit of fun all these off cuts if they're too small like that, just combine them with the other ball and then just keep making them really as you can see we finished off with the, the end product. We got potato fondant, creamy, buttery mashed potato, and potato gnocchi, all from the same potato, the rooster red potatoes, or Albert roosters. As long as you use the reds with the skins, you'll be great. So they are amazing. We're gonna pop them in the freezer. We're gonna eat them nice and warm. You can keep that for the next day. And if you want to keep them for the next day as well, just pop them in the fridge, and when you want them again, put the color side down in the pan, pop them in the oven for a couple of minutes, just make sure they're hot all the way through. And that's it, nice and easy. Three simple recipes with one type of potato. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and make sure you tune in for the next couple of videos coming up soon. Hope you enjoyed this potato in three different types of ways as a how-to video. Hope that's more of an interesting video and hope to see you guys in the next one.